good idea. I will. I will. Alright, you're all set? Yeah. Fine! Thank you! Oh, sorry. Oh, it's to be i to i i to i i um, so Gary asked me to uh, talk about All-Star Link. Um, it's been a couple years since the, as a club that we talked about All-Star Link. Well, All-Star Link. But um, it's a technology that the club uses uh, very heavily uh, on our repeater system, um, especially uh, for the beacon net. Uh, there's a lot of people that come in from all over the world, actually. I was watching the other night, and I'm like, that's a lot of random worldwide traffic. Yeah. So, um, so we're talking a little bit about, uh, um, a little bit, kind of, this is kind of a, of a grab bag of talking a little bit about what All Star is, and then a little bit of a walkthrough slash very light demo of the latest release of the All Star Link software, uh, which just came out in July. So, um, as we've talked about before, there are uh, three general types of repeater link. Uh, there is fully digital over data link, um, usually IP, digitized audio end to end from your mic to your speaker. Um, this does require new radios and repeaters, um, requires <laughs> proprietary closed components in a lot of cases. Uh, DMR, D-Star, System Fusion, uh, NXDN, P25, any of those are um, a digital, fully digital mode that are linked over an IP network, essentially. Uh, if you're familiar with like the Marks system in Ohio, the public safety radio system, right? <laughs> Um, there's towers all over the state. The state towers are then all linked together over an IP network over a trunk radio system. Uh, analog over IP. Um, this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, analog RF to the repeater. Uh, digital audio using IP between the repeater. Simplex knows other computers. This is nice because it overlays well on existing radios. You don't have to buy all new equipment. You just add on to some of the things you have. Um, you can add internet connections from PCs, smartphones. We have uh, club members who have all-star DV switch accounts that they come in to. Um, my little all-star does ID itself, <laughs> which is what it's supposed to do. Um, uh, IRLP is an older version of this. Um, the infamous Echo Link of course, is, is, is like this, and All-Star, which is what we're talking about. And then there's analog over analog radio. Um, so this is going to be uh, analog, usually FM end-to-end. -end. Um, usually, a lot of cases, you'll have a multi-site system, like 53.17 is an example, um, where there's a bunch of received sites on six meters. The six meters gets translated into 70 centimeters. It all shoots back to the central node, and then the transmit comes out. Um, from there, you can also do multi-site with uh, bridges over RF, things like that. Um, Split-site repeaters are where this is used a lot. Um, there are, uh, I think this happens a lot more out west maybe, with site-to-site -site FM links to get over mountains and things like that. Um, but we're going to be talking about type 2 here. So this is, this is, a, this is a project called All-Star Link. This really got started probably probably almost 20 years ago now, well, maybe a little less than 20 years ago, about 20, 2005, 2006. And it was based around the concept that hooking up repeaters is not tremendously different from a telephone system. And I don't mean a home telephone system. I'm talking about a business type telephone system where you have a central PBX 
you have lots of endpoints. The endpoints want to talk to other endpoints. You can have conference bridges, things like that, right? It, very analogous to a phone system. So there's a couple guys that were working on um, a system called Asterisk, um, which is an open source um, full phone system. It's used all over the world. Um, they're also ham radio operators, and they said, we should use this to be a repeater controller and to do linking. So that's what they did. Um, they wrote an add-on module to Asterisk that adds essentially repeater functionality and then leverages um, other parts of a PBX system to link those repeater systems together. Uh, all the RF is standard analog FM um, by design. They weren't looking to create a new over-the-air radio protocol, right? This, was, this is all traditional FM analog voice. Um, the primary method of control is DTMF codes, just like you would use normally. Um, as I mentioned, this can be grafted into just about any radio stack, uh, create many links, there's scheduling capabilities, you can bring up links whenever you want. Um, it supports Echolink and a bunch of other protocols on the repeater. Um, this is the main project that we're talking about here, All Star Link. Um, there's an older system called Hamvoy, um, but we're, we're talking about the newer stuff from All Star Link tonight. Um, so I mentioned about why use a PBX software. Well, one of the reasons is, is that when you have radio communications, you by and large want them in real time, right? You don't want to key up, record a message, have it delivered to the other side, the other person has to play it, then someone else, like, it, you want this, these transmissions to be in real time. And that's what phone systems do, right? When you make a phone call, it transmits your call from one place to another in, you know, essentially real time. Um, so again, this was just a, this was a, a, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Let's build radio and ham radio concepts on top of a system that already exists. So a link is just a telephone call. We'll talk about that in a minute. Links or calls are made using a well-tested, very stable phone protocol for handling voice traffic. Um, and all of the encoding and the decoding of the audio is built into the system and uses um, open standards. So unlike DMR, DSTAR, all the digital modes you know today, in order to encode and decode those, you have to have a proprietary chip. Um, it's called AMBI or AMBI2 or AMBI Plus, depending on which radio mode you're talking about. Um, that's why there's very few software implementations of these, because if you have a software implementation, you run into patent problems with a company called DBSI. Um, they wanted to avoid this. There's an entire worldwide standards body that sets how audio calls, the quality of audio calls, what they should sound like and how they operate. Um, patent free, royalty free, like it's, here's how you implement a G711 audio stream. Here's how you implement a G721 audio. Like, it's just documented, you implement. So all of these things come together really nicely to operate on a system that works as both a local repeater or a remote base. So on, on 147.39, all stars connected as a remote base. It's a separate port on the controller for 147.39. And it itself then allows us to do a lot of linking and features. There are other repeaters that use this directly as the controller. We used to do that um, a number of years ago. Uh, I think 444.2, Marty. Is that is that a, you're using the Pi directly? Yes. Yeah, 444.2. Um, so it'll it'll handle lots of different configurations. Um, there's also the concept of hotspots. I brought a I brought a hotspot-ish thing here. It's really a I mean technically it's a full duplex repeater except it doesn't have a duplexer. <laughs> it has two transfer radios. It's half milliwatt out in and out on both sides. Um, single radio hotspot for simplex. Um, you can connect all sorts of different configurations to this. There's um, 
um, hardware boards that are called RTCMs that you can buy that you plug into your radio and you just give them an internet connection and the RTCM boards connect to your Astros box somewhere else in the world. You don't even have to put a computer at your radio site. Um, so there's lots of different things that are, that are out there and they all interoperate because it's all based on open standards and open systems that everybody can use without cost. Well, licensing costs, everything else costs. Um, any questions about anything before I go on? So, as of yesterday, there were um, 35,547 registered nodes in the All Star Link system. Um, and at the time I pulled these statistics, which I guess was uh, 943 UTC, so what would have been uh, uh, 5, 7, whatever I'm having a math failure in my head now. <laughs> Um, this would have been like 530, 543. Um, there was, there was 9,444 nodes that were actively registered in the system, meaning that they were on the network and could be making or receiving data connections. Um, there's a portal. 20, 27, 27 of them, 27 of them are hooked up to the, uh, the meeting. It's very possible. <laughs> We're getting ready to. <laughs> Solve the camera. Yeah. Um, here's an example. If you look at the, if you go to the All Star site, there's a node list page. Here's a number of Sarah's nodes. Um, the ones in green are all the ones that are currently online. Um, this one we haven't used in a long time. So the node just hangs out out there. Um, but what is a node, right? So um, a node is really just, in All-Star, if you really think about it, it's really just a short telephone number, right? Um, literally under the hood, that's exactly how it's handled. It's technically handled as a telephone extension, but it's essentially a short telephone number. Um, if you're familiar with DMR IDs, these are not DMR IDs. Um, people seem to get that confused for some reason, I'm not sure why. Uh, when you sign up, you're assigned a five-digit number. And right now, if you sign up, I think you'll get something in like 57,000, or 57, yeah, 57,000 something. Um, you get a five-digit number. If you want to have more than one node, um, that number gets split, and you end up with a six-digit node. So this was this was this was one of my nodes originally before they went to six digits. It was 46018. Um, I actually have two, well, I had three hooked up, now I have two currently. Um, so they were 460180 and 460181. Um, so when you encounter a five or a six digit node number, it just means that whoever has the node has more than one node versus just one single node. Um, there are special node types. Um, there are core conferencing hubs that have a, a two, a two, a four-digit number that starts with two. Um, there are, if you see one that's listed as a one something, um, nodes between 1,000 and 1,999 are considered private nodes. The reason you normally do that is you want to have two <coughs> systems that aren't on the internet, but sometimes you'll encounter links in the middle that are a private node. I'm not sure why people do that, but some I see sometimes people do that. Um, you can get a listing of all the nodes at the node list, and you can see um, charts of who is linked up at the time by going to the All Star Link Stats page. So nodes, if you just think about it, um, nodes are just hops, essentially hops along a, a network, so to speak of connections. Um, each node sends all of the audio that it receives regardless of origin and there's our friendly little asterisk because of course there's caveats to that but in general um, whatever node and whatever audio a node receives it transmits along. Um, each node can make arbitrary numbers of connections to any other node um, and then there's a concept of hubs. Hubs is really just a a state of mind of the node, right? 
Um, a, a, a hub can be a node with a radio or without a radio attached to it. It's just usually, it's just a, a, a logical administrative point to say everything connect to this thing, right? So here's an example. This is a real world example of um, 4496 is the main conference hub for the club. 43211 is out of Doylestown. That's what's currently connected to 39. This is actually sitting in my basement, which has somehow turned out to be the most reliable place to put the hub. So it just hangs out in the basement. Um, 460181 is actually that guy right there. So currently he's not actually connected to that at the moment. Um, <clears throat> Then for this de for the demo I put together before, I had a private node 1999 that was connected to that. Um, 50702 is the is the 2-1 machine down in Worcester. Um, and 49199 might be Aaron, K-E-8-L-V-A. I can't remember <laughs> when I put this together. This was somebody. I can't remember who it was. I think that's Aaron. Um, but the concept of this is, you know, let's say you know, so there's a radio obviously sitting over here, so someone comes into 3.9, it keys up this node, which keys up all the rest of the nodes, and all of the nodes within half a second to a second all hear the audio out that was being sent into 3.9. You want key, let's say I was sitting at home, I decided I wanted to reply to Nick, because Nick's always harassing me to get on nets, um, even though I'm tired um, <laughs> at night. Nick's like, you should stay up until midnight on the net. And I'm like, no, I'm not. It's fun. <laughs> he tries. He <laughs> does try. But I have kids still. So I have I to get up, kids. and I have to get up very early to get them on the bus. So so I reply to Nick, I key up 460181. The audio goes right back in the other direction, and of course to all the other nodes as well. So anybody who's connected either <coughs> electronically or RF-wise to one of these nodes can participate in the conversation. Now, obviously what's nice about this is you do it over the internet, right? So, you know, obviously our site 39 can stand alone. Obviously 50702 down in Worcester on 147.21, if there's an internet outage or power outage, it can stand alone obviously. But for the normal course of life, in 2024, we have ubiquitous internet everywhere, all right? Um, so we use this to connect all these repeaters together, nice and seamlessly. Here's a couple examples of some large meshes. Um, this, is, this is what Nick dreams the beacon net will look like someday. So nice. Um, the board breaker does. Yeah. Um, this is Western Intertie. This is a very large system out west. Um, MO, the M0HOY hub. This is a big repeater network in uh, the UK. Um, and there's others. I just, these are just two well-known ones that make really nice pictures for presentations like this. Any questions on All Star as a technology? Gary Shorter. Can you do uh address the latency and the uh, need to, uh, let's see, how does Dan say it, pause to the cause? Yeah, let the repeater drop and wait for the tone before you key up. So this is pretty fast, right, within a second or so. But what happens is, is you get people with custom courtesy tones or a repeater has to ID or, I don't know, like whatever reason, right? And so, give it a pause between keying up. Yeah, Nick. Um, it's not immediately with the beep though. They're like, there's a beep, and just a little bit later, there's a beep. Am I mistaken? There better not be a k. If you're, if you're hearing k, you don't have. You, you have to be there. But what I'm saying is, just because you hear the beep is that's when you have to take the moment and wait a second. If you hear the k, you don't have tone squelch turned on, right? But yes, your, your point is correct. After you hear the beep, then wait a second. There's no k. 
I made sure that 3.9 does not have the k noise at the end. <laughs> Is that technical, by the way? Yes. Yeah. The k you will find that. Where the, who got the book? Who won the... Who won the see, 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 but, see, but, I just felt that would be right. <laughs> I'm talking about being, being on, um, on the all-star part. I can hear that from other places. Oh, yeah. Other, see, I'm not yeah. talking about when I'm on the repeater. I don't oh, no. yes. I'm talking about on all-star in particular. Is, there's a little tick noise when the audio goes. Yeah, it's, the beep is not enough. There has, there's an actual like unlinking or linking match. Yeah. Yeah. Give it, give it a second after the courtesy. If you're on 3.9, give it a second after the courtesy tone before you key up again. Is that what you hear on uh, Nanny, after Nancy on key? Yeah, well, if, if you're listening to like the board, uh, her, just her or on the border breaker now. Uh, because yeah. the border breaker net is really hard to say because there, there's no, just a lot of noise. Uh, She's just coming in on the repeater. On the barometer net usually. Yeah, she, her internet connection is horrible. There's a, there's yeah, a noise. It's, it's a long story, but the setup is not the, it's, it's not the best setup. And uh, plus I hear it on, um, uh, what's his name too? Uh, I thought, oh, no, oh, what's his name? <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I hear it on his radio too. When you hear him in the morning, he's on a hand talk. Oh. So, so no, and that's a little bit noisier. Hand talk, he too is out of the dog. He's not walking the dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. The legend of the browser. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. yeah. So you got, say you have node 50702. That node is not going to 48496, it's going to whatever. 50702 program that to go to, correct? No, it's connecting to everything. So, so if you have all of the, so let, let's let's start here, right? This is our hub. So 43211 automatically connects to 48496. Like that is just programmed in that's always connected, right? So if you ignore the rest of this, ignore all the rest of this, someone comes in on 39. It's going to key up both of these nodes, and any let's just pretend this has a radio on it. The audio will come out that. So if I take my node that I have at home, and I program in it to talk to four eight four nine six, where would it be in that chain? Mm, I don't know, up there. It would be another drive yeah. in. Yeah, but if you keyed up, all these other nodes will all key up Correct. at the same time. Okay. Right. Yep. I got what you're saying. So if you have to wait for that thing to drop in somebody's IDs, then it doesn't actually reset. That like gets if really you do that one one second afterwards. So it depends. <laughs> now you're getting very much into the well, it depends. So okay, well, it, it depends on if the other repeaters that are IDing are configured to allow you to key up over top of the ID. Okay. Well, I just wanted to wait for the time. For them things to ID before we can No, on, on three nine no, especially reset anyways. Yeah, on three nine if you start here at start to ID, you can key up right over top of it. It'll it's change the CW down. underneath of your talking. You don't have to wait for that. Ben? Yeah, how does this compare to like a Pi Star hotspot? So Pi Star is for digital modes. Okay. Um, and it is not a so a Pi Star is just a digital client to one of those networks. Um, so, it, and it doesn't, you can't just hook a, well, it depends on what kind of node you have. Um, but you have to, basically it takes your RF in, it'll have a built-in um, AMV chip that'll actually do the vocoding. Um, it'll connect, it, but it only connects to the thing, the one thing that you're, Telling it to connect to. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of kind of curious uh, where I echo fits into all of this because uh, I get the impression that when I get on echo link, it pretty quickly in the, the layout you have that it gets converted to all star. <laughs> <laughs> So Echolink is an unfortunate problem in life. <laughs> it, it is very convenient with the app on your phone. The architecture of Echolink is terrible. 
Um, when you're on Echolink, you have your device. Your device has to go to an Echolink proxy node. Then the Echolink proxy node is what actually is connecting to a separate decoder or a separate endpoint on an Echolink server, which then connects to Allstar. It Echolink is 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 not nearly as real time as this. The delay to Echolink is about three seconds. That's why it's really hard, especially when you have a lot of nodes hooked up, and someone comes on net Echolink and keys over top of everybody. It's because they they they're three seconds behind reality. Yeah, so I'm just curious. Uh, What's the latency typically on uh, all stars? There has to be something. At least uh, you give me a much clearer understanding of why there's so much latency on it. It's about half a second. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it depends on. I mean, from from here to here, it's really fast, like like a quarter of a second. If you're talking about this, from like. Here to 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 here. To here. I mean, it might be a second, something like that. It, but it, it's pretty fast. So, do I? I have Echo Link on my phone. How do I use All Star if I don't have a better? You can use Echo Link. So you can, like, for Sarah, you can connect to WWKY R. Yep. Um, if you have an Android phone. Um, there's an application called DV Switch, okay. DV Switch Mobile, that will actually do All Star directly. You register for an All Star Link account, and then there's this feature called it's called Web Transceiver. It's kind of a weirdly named thing, um, but you use that as sort of a proxy to get into the All Star Link. It's a lot faster and a lot smoother than using Echo Link. There's a there's one of those, not that same one for the iPhone too. It'll let you do All Star. That's maintained. There was an old one that they haven't updated in forever. I'll look it up. I, I thought the new one was maintained. Oh, may, okay. Maybe someone else can help. DV Switch works pretty good. Yeah, if you have an Android phone or an Android device, DV Switch Mobile works really well. Okay. Anything else? All right. So instead of using Echo Link, buy a hot, go to Hotspot. No. Um, so, um, building an all-star node is just essentially having a computer that's able to run the all-star link software and something to consume the audio. Uh, you can create a radioless node and have a little sound card with a headset and use it that way. There's a lot of people that do that. Um, there's a lot of different choices, everything from um, an RA board is a really nice kit audio board that you can build into stuff, but it's just a board with connectors on it. Um, the DMK URIX is a little more packaged. Um, hotspot radio modules, there are hat modules which clamp on top of pies. Then he has a couple of these outboard ones like that one. Um, there's Shari. Um, those are, are um, those are hot spots. Those are fully, you buy one, it's a, you have to do some assembly, but it's a full kit that you piece together and it fits nicely in the package. Um, and then there's also, um, I, I don't have it on here, there's a product called a clear node, which is a guy who will buy you, pay him to essentially configure your node for you and then he just ships you a pre-configured node. They're, they're reasonably priced for the level of effort that the guy went into to to program them. Yeah, I have a clear. Yeah. Um, so All Star Link version three is the version of software that just came out back in July. Uh, if you're into Linux, it's based on the latest version of Debian Linux. Uh, it'll work on all, basically all modern computers. Uh, it'll work on. Um, cloud-hosted virtual machines. There's a lot of people who will run nodes in the cloud um, for different clubs. Um, and it's supported on all modern Pi platforms. Um, 
Ham flip would do pie in the past, but it's not. It wasn't really optimized for pie. The, the, the software will run now with all the native pie happiness that makes pies so very nice to to mess around with. Um, this is that guy on a shelf. That's its normal home in my office. Is on that little shelf. Um, some of the some of the stuff that came out. Um, now uses the Raspberry, the, if you're putting it on a Pi, it'll use the um, Raspberry Pi Imager with all the standard setup options. So how to build a Pi is documented to death on the internet. Um, we of course have our own documentation on how to do it, but it makes the setup really nice. You can configure your wireless network, your user, everything right in the interface when you image the device. Um, the interface is now web-based. The older uh, pies, you had to get a terminal and connect into it and type into it a lot. The new interface is all web interface. Um, if you like command line, it's still available. Um, there's full firewalling now, because um, a lot of people were putting these on the internet without firewalls. Um, and like I said, it'll work on all the modern pies, three, four, five, and a zero, zero, two, W. Um, there's a manual that people have put together um, that really covers in detail a lot of the basic topics. Um, for example, if you want to build a Pi yourself, there's, there's literally a painstaking step-by-step -step, um, Raspberry Pi image install that takes you step-by-step -step exactly how to image a device. Um, there's helps on all the major things. Um, there's an advanced topic section for people who want to run usually repeaters, auto patches, things that are a little more complicated. There's a lot of directions on how to do different stuff. Um, and of course, if you have interest in helping either with um, software code or the manual itself, right? Um, we have, there's information about how to contribute to the project. Um, I was going to just click around in the interface for a few minutes just to show people um, what some of these things look like just because I thought people might find that interesting. Um, yeah, Chuck. Yeah, just uh, wondering uh, how easy or messy would it be to set up uh, a node under uh, my Debian system, which runs uh, under the Windows subsystem for Can't Debian. do it. Huh? Won't work on, it won't work on WSL. Huh? You need a kernel module you can't put on Windows. Well, supposedly it's the standard uh, it's not. kernel that it's running. It's yeah, not. It won't do it. Trust okay. me, it won't. <laughs> We've spent a lot of time testing different containers that that one won't work. Um, so this was going to be this guy. <coughs> I. Uh, set up the wireless blindly at home and must have fat fingered something that I can't connect to and I don't have a network cable <laughs> to connect to it. Um, but this is now the landing page. Um, this is actually the Pi that's currently running um, 442.5125 actually. Um, this is what the new landing page will look like. Um, <clears throat> it's set up now that when you plug it onto your home network it'll just auto configure and you can go to the node name.local and it'll pop right up, no trying to figure out where it went on the network at all. Um, and then as I mentioned, um, there's a web admin portal. Um, the web admin portal will take you to this one. Um, and this is where you can do all of the configuration. It's much more, uh, much, a lot more user friendly uh, to manage the system than the old uh, command line menu. Um, but there's uh, there's also there's all sorts of stuff you know you can, you can see logs if you have a problem um, check your disk space that's the boring stuff um, if you want to if you have a hung service you need to restart asterisk which does happen from time to time you can do that from here um, but you can also get uh, all the software updates um, automatically come through this system as well as there are some pieces that are still um, require the command line, but um, you can uh, you can run them all from inside of your web browser now, rather than try to get a client and 
make that all work. You just go to the website and you can just uh, type right into it. Um, it also comes with um, Almon 3 built into it. If you're familiar with the hub, the um, hub.wkwy, that's a bigger instance of this, but every node has a link monitor uh, inside of it. You can use this to control linking so I can. Uh, Yeah, that's not going to help because I don't have the dog leader for my laptop. <laughs> but thank you, Nick. It's very prepared of you. <laughs> um, but you can, uh, so I can, I can click on this guy and I can uh, say I want to connect to node, uh, say, uh, 48496 because this is the, the, cup, the club node. Uh, execute. And uh, this is going to fail me now probably, isn't it? I think you put it in as 48469. Is that what I did? I tested this right before that, and now I'm doing 48496. Execute. There we go. So now you can see that I'm connected to. Um, now you can see that I'm connected here to the All Star Hub. Uh, and then if you go over to, uh, this is the club node, if you look at the club node now, you'll see. So, uh, where are we at here? 50815 is connected to uh, 4425125. What? <laughs> Mark's connected, but he's here. <laughs> yeah. Mark, there you go. Mark. I don't know KD, KD8S by Chad. Oh, that's okay. They're, Chad, they're, really morning guy. Yeah, they're always connected. So, um, the, um, I mentioned the um, links to you. Um, here's an example of what's connected to Sarah right now. So, here's the Sarah's hub. Here's our repeater. Um, Echo Link, you can see it. The Echo Link service is sitting off there, and there's a couple of links. When you look at this during a net, especially the especially the beacon net, but also the barometer net, there's there's quite a there's quite a number of things connected up for that. Um, I think the manual is really nice. Uh, if you go to this, there's I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of different types of topics. You know. People who get you know even worried like all the way down to things like hotspot unkey delay. How can I set up broadcastify on my node? I need to so I need to configure like a lot of these hotspots use the SA818 radio modules. You know how do I configure the all these modules? There's there's a lot of good information. Um, how do I set up a SIP phone? I have I want to connect my telephone to the node. You can do things like that. Um, as I mentioned, the Pi appliance stuff. Um, don't be afraid of this. I mean, it'll go through. I mean, it'll go through step-by-step -step directions. What to click, every screen that you'll get to image the uh, software all the way down to booting up the node, the uh, web interface. Um, the web interface has been well documented on how you do different things like configuring your network, software updates, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, so that's kind of what's new uh, with All Stars. It's, there's, there's been a lot um, since it was released back in the middle of July. Um, about there's been about over there's been I think 1,200 nodes that have converted to the new software. It, you can't do an in-place upgrade. You do, you do have to reconfigure the node, which is good and bad, I suppose. Um, but you know, 10% of the active node population right off the bat's been pretty good. So. so the clear node that I got a couple years ago, is it going to start failing because of all the upgrades? No. No, the guy that, the guy that does the clear node supports them. Um, I think you can even get full software updates from him. So do you have to update that? You should, yes. The software updates are available, yeah. God, that's something else to screw up. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> easy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so I mean, part of the thing, the reason that the project's saying that is some of the older concepts are going to eventually go away, like in the next 18 to 24 months, and some of the old nodes will stop working that don't get upgraded. Um, 
there's there's some pretty legacy technology that needs to get ripped out of the system. Um, so that's I mean that's why the it, there's interest in getting everyone to start updating. Yeah. So what's the cheapest like entry level node do you think you can go with? To buy out of the box or to build yourself? To build it. If I mean if you don't care what it looks like. Um, yeah, just make it work. Yeah, if you don't care what it looks like, get a get a Pi 4 kit off of Amazon. It's about 90 bucks. Um, get a, uh, a Master's Communication RA25 board. I think that costs $35. And then you'll have to interface it to a radio of some kind that you have. Um, the biggest thing with the radios is you have to be able to get to the COR, COS line somewhere. Okay. Um, there's there's tutorials on how to like crack open your bow fang, and, or if you have like a if you have a radio with an accessory port, like that'll work just fine. You know. Okay. That brings up a question I have. So Aries, we have an Echolink node we've been fighting with for years. It's Burn running it down. On, yeah, <laughs> it's running on a Pi. You know, it's running SVX link, and it sometimes feels like working, and sometimes it doesn't. But it, so the way we're configured right now is I have the Pi connected to a, a mobile. The mobile is on our repeater frequency, so when somebody comes in through Equilink on the Pi, it actually uses the mobile to talk to the repeater. Can you do that with All Star? Could I do the same thing? Can I put an All Star node on that radio and then use that radio to connect to the repeater? with the all-star node running on the Pi? Yeah, I mean, it would work in the same fashion where you'd have like a simple simplex channel on a duplex system. But yeah, I mean, it would work exactly. It would be functionally equivalent. Okay, so I could do that. And then I could add echo link to the all-star node. Or just not add it. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have people that... I kind constantly get complaints about not having echo link running, so... People want it. I, I, want I know. To. That's the only reason 3.9 has it is because there are a lot of people that want to use it. Right. But it, 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 it causes so many problems. Oh, yeah. It causes so many problems. Yeah, Eric. I was just going to add to Ken. The Echolink service under the All-Star Pi Pi environment is much more stable than Echolink. So well, that's true, too. If you okay. really have to have Echolink, do it through the All-Star. All -Star. Yeah, there, the other, the other the standalone echo link stuff is yeah. really flaky. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 guy, the, guy, the guy who does the work on the channel driver for echo link is a guy named Danny, um, KB4MDD. Um, especially in All-Star version 3, the, the channel driver for echo link is, it, it is rock solid. I mean, it, f f given what All-Star can fix with the problems of the echo link system, it, it is rock solid. Like, as long as All Star is working, the channel driver in your all, or, I'm sorry, as long as the Echo Link network is working, your channel driver in an ASLV3 will be, will be rock solid. You won't have any problems with it. But yeah, you could, you put it up, you put it up as a simplex hotspot right. node with a, attached to a radio. Right. And then you just, you, obviously, you have the weird dynamic of it's a simplex link in a hot, in a duplex system. But other than that, it would work fine. Well, yeah, that's basically the way Echo Link's running now. So it's yeah. simplex and a duplex system. But, uh, yeah. I do have one comment, too. You mentioned SIP phones. A couple of years ago, I gave a presentation to this group about uh, Hamshack Hotline. Mm -hmm. If you have a Hamshack Hotline phone and the All Star node is configured to allow Hamshack Hotline input, because I think you can, I think that can be, has to be configured. You can actually use your Hamshack Hotline phone to dial directly into an All Star node, and use your phone as a radio into an All Star node. If you just want to, if you're sitting in your shack and you want to dial into an All Star node, you can dial a node up. Just use the node number. Uh, uh, you know, take the phone off the hook, dial the node number in, and it connects. And then you can use your phone to connect to any All Star node. Sarah's is, doesn't. Sarah's is turned off. Yeah, it is turned off. Yeah, you can't do that with Sarah's. <laughs> okay. There, there, there's a lot of people that do that and just do drive-by dial-ups and stuff. It's just, it, it's, it's a cool feature in a small system. It works great, but when you get in a large system, it doesn't work so good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you mentioned the 
Nick had the Sarah dashboard up and noticed my note had keyed up. And he called me and says, hey, are you home? I'm like, no, I'm at work. He said, well, your note just keyed up. How does that happen? Um, ghost. That's <laughs> and so I pulled up the dashboard and it did it. I was like, oh my gosh, it, it's could, just it, it might be misconfigured to be try to send telemetry tones to the hub. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm only speculating. Yeah. That's a good I was just getting your view. I had it sitting right next to the router, so I moved it away. <laughs> No, that's that's definitely not what it is. I mean, it, it could be something generated a tone and it keyed up. I mean, you have I assume you have like squelch like a tone input put on it. It's not just carrier squelch. On the nose? Yeah. Hey, uh, it's a clear nose, so whatever he said it up. That's a fine I I make sure it has like a tone input on it. You don't you don't want to run a hot spot on carrier squelch. Like you want to have to use tone or DCS into it to open it up. Okay. And then you were showing us the diagram with the nodes connected. Um, Nick doesn't like loops, and that's where we hear the echo on these connected nodes sometimes. Yes, people who are not careful will connect the network in a loop. Um, there's actually a guy who's working on a piece of software to go up and find loops and snipe them out of the network. So, how does a loop happen? Um, Somebody forgets to take some, something down. as simple as you have one node, they connect to a second node, the second node connects to the third node, and then the third node connects back, back. to the first node. Instead of the mall going straight into our 3.9 node. Right. Going into yeah, there, there's, there's, there's some people. This does require a little bit of care, and there are some people who just go around and key up a bunch of stuff and don't exercise caution in what they should be, what they should be doing. Um, you know, a lot of, and then a lot of times it's. Um, a lot of times it'll be like a larger network was on one net, someone didn't drop their node off the one large network, and then that connects to us, but then their network was still bridge. It just, you know, it's just people not being careful. I mean, the moral of the story is unless you, unless you have like a home base, like mine's always connected to Sarah because that's what its purpose is. I don't use it for like randomly browsing the world of All Star. Like otherwise, you should get in the habit of connecting your node when you're using it and disconnecting it when you're done. Like I actually have two nodes at home, one of which is just parked on Sarah 24-7 and then the other one's the one I use for experimenting with stuff. So, yeah, I just want to say I'm very impressed with uh, what you're showing here and uh, I might uh, when I get the time, uh, almost take a crack at uh, doing it because uh, when I started, tried working with All Star, well, it was at least two years ago, uh, the software was, uh, from a user standpoint, was such an utter abortion. I think as a software guy, I would have been ashamed to have given a customer or something like that. But what you got here uh, looks darn good. And yeah, there, there's there's been a lot of work on. The, the the front end as well as the back end. I mean, the the appliance. I mean, the Pi appliance especially. I mean, you image the Pi appliance using the distribution, and I mean, this is the landing page you get. And, and just one other thing, uh, would uh, uh, Linux Mint in addition uh, be okay to run this on? Would what? Like, Mark the chair. Debian. Okay, uh, Linux Mint Debian edition. Nope, it has to be Debian directly. <coughs> it's, De it's, Debian. It's, it's not. They, they, it's, it's, they, Mint changes packages out from underneath of it a little bit. Okay. De Debian, Debian 12 Bookworm is the only supported platform right now. Okay. Can you go back to the, the large meshes that are available? Yeah, that one. So, uh, when somebody out on the fringe there just hooks up and kerchunks, that makes all of those people wait until the kerchunk is done. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. <coughs> so Just check it, don't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> what is this one in front of us? I know the pie is in the black box, but what is this? That is a hotspot radios, that's um, the duplex board. So if you, if the email I sent out for the all-star build, that's that's the HSR duplex board. That's one hundred and ninety dollars. But just for the board? No, that whole package. That oh, all comes. Yeah. That that comes one hundred percent assembled. Like when you get that in the mail, it's that whole assembly with the cable, and you just plug it into your hotspot. They'll even he'll even um, program it on the frequencies you want for you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I like building the stuff like i've had a lot of fun just doing that part so i've looked into the all-star nodes a little bit i just haven't pulled the trigger on there's, one yeah yet. there's a lot of different options everything from cobbling something yourself together to buying that no i'm not clear no guy okay. <laughs> <laughs> clear that for the appliance operators exactly it's very easy so in the morning when you hear all that kerchunking it's not just one node saying good morning to the other nodes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, sir, I don't think so. Okay. That's marking. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the dog pounds. Any other questions? Yeah, Rick. And when you uh, connect to a node, does that automatically drop off after some time out? No. No. You have to manually take it down? Yeah. What type of command is for like initiating and then dropping it? Star three and then the number is connect, and then star one and the number is disconnect. Oh, okay. Um, on the clear note, there's a, a toggle where if I connect to something, uh, it automatically disconnects from whatever I was on before. So it kind of saves a step there. And I can't remember codes like that. I'd be calling you at three in the morning. <laughs> You can call me at 3 in the morning all you want. <laughs> My phone is very well configured to not ring at 3 o'clock in the morning unless it's a work emergency. So how do you disconnect without connecting to something else besides powering it up? He doesn't. The well, you're not a clear note? Your clear note I'm or something? clear note. Clear yeah. note, there's a switch, and you just set it, and then when you connect to a node, and you connect to another node, it dumps uh, your first uh, node. He's asking how to yes. disconnect without no. having to connect to another one. Mine shuts off. Because yeah, I have to go back on and pick the Sarah node after so long. I would just tap on the node number and, and you should be able to disconnect with the next pack. Okay. And there's a and there's a there's also a command that'll disconnect all nodes. Right. Yeah. I think it's 70. Yeah. 70. Yeah. We should be able to prove this now. The one I do remember. So Nick will be having the clear node support special interest group <laughs> under, the, <laughs> under the arbor in five minutes. So when the nodes are powered down, are they still con like showing connected? No. Okay. They'll drop off. So, so the way that works is your node has to re-register every 180 seconds. And then if you're, and, what, and, and if you drop out of the registry, it means um, that nothing, nothing will try to connect to you and nothing will take your call. Okay. How many notes can you connect to at the same time? Yeah. Actually, there was a guy actually in the community, the forums just last weekend who did that test. And I want to say he got to 200 something before it started um, stuttering. No. But we're not, but I was reading, I, look, I actually, he posted his logs, I was looking at his logs. I'm not convinced that he actually hit a limitation of the software. I think a bad node got, a, a, a broken node got in there and was corrupting the audio stream. Because the, the error was something like um, audio buffer failed to fill with, like it, it wasn't like I'm out of resources, please help me. It was like a weird audio buffering error. So, but yeah, I think it was 200 some nodes. He, yeah, basically this guy's like, I'm gonna put this node up and connect to me between this and this time. And of course, you know, everyone on the internet's like, yes, I'm gonna do that and, you know, connect it up to it. But you, I mean, I mean, hub nodes can easily host 100, 150. 
Because it's really, if you think about it, it's really just like a conference call. Yeah. Right? I mean, a telephone conference call. So. Lots of questions. Anything else? Yes, Devin? It was just a simple one, and that was, is that a hard pass, never going to think about, never going to do the Hamshack hotline on our new, like, that's like a, never going to happen <laughs> since Stone, or can we talk about that? Is there something in the future? No. No? I'm sorry well, about it. <laughs> if the tech manager trustee position comes open. <laughs> I don't want to. I, I don't want to open the door to that because it's going to cause the same problems that Echolink causes, and now you're going to have two highly latent systems that are going to try to talk to each other across. The, I just. I just. I don't. I, yeah, I know. I mean, if the reason I ask it is because when you go on Hamshack and you look at the All Star notes, there's a list of about 200 that are on there. We, you wouldn't have to register it, but I'm just saying. So there are people who, you know. So, but I understand. That's all I want to. Yeah. I, it, what I would, what I, what honestly, what I would say is there's so many good radioless clients for All Star that if you want to do All Star, use one of the All Star clients. Oh, I have a ton. I was just thinking about sometimes I don't have stuff with me, but my half shack's always there, so that's all it's yeah. no, no worries. Anybody else? What? Oh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe we were reading loud. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Jason, thank you very much. Splendid presentation. Timely as well. Uh, I do appreciate everybody who came tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, we'll do it again next month on the third Thursday of October. Eternal summer. Eternal summer. It's going to be. It's going to be.